Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together, where you get your daily dosage of homeschooling knowledge with an absolute avalanche of dad jokes. We were having dad jokes. We were having a debate before this on on the level of humor uh, that I that I bring to this show, <laughs> and how important it is that sometimes my jokes are, you know, obscure. No, widespread, and everyone goes. I get the yuck factor, and everyone goes, "Oh yes, that was a terrible joke." But yes, I understand where he might think that's funny. But then sometimes, I get my precision jokes for that one or two people, and I know they're in there, and they're dying laughing, and Harold doesn't get that. Arrow doesn't get it. Yeah. I just kind of go, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go on. The people love my humor, Ariel. Anyway, thank you so much for I joining us. I think you're us. funny, sweetie. Thank you so much for Most doing. of the time. You've, we've told the joke before that <laughs> on our first day of meeting, we were all standing at the research center. That it, was a funny joke, though. Yeah, I know, but it was borderline, right? So I don't I'm think sitting it was there. borderline. Her name is Ariel. I could go one of multiple and ways. He's very tall. I'm very, I'm very tall. And I'm not. I'm, and she's not. <laughs> and I'm standing there and they're like, can you see? And I looked at her and I said, no problem. I have an aerial view. I mean, that is like. I would stand behind that. I think I, that's a good joke. I think that's solid. I mean, she, she you, goes. You hadn't even asked me out on a date yet. She so immediately that was, looks at that and says, this man has dad jokes. <laughs> he is, he's in it he's for the long term. To be a he's, he's looking for being a father. He's looking to be a husband and. He's going to provide terrible humor. You, you you were out on a limb there. You hadn't even asked me out on a first date. And I remember you looking at me going, how's she going to accept that? Yeah, it was one of those ones where you're like... You, you, you and mentioned. I laughed and you were like, whew, so when you're, dodged a bullet. When you're a young guy like that, you always put the hook in the joke to see if you can bring it back. But that one was gone. I didn't get that one baited in time. <laughs> oh, good. I could have lost, lost the whole but deal. But we digress. We digress. If you haven't had a chance, head down to the show notes and check out all of our links and and things down below. This is our third episode in our continuing series on budget homeschooling. We are going to be talking about books and school supplies. And Mm -hmm. we talked about curriculum and we did an overview episode as the first one. We hope you guys have been enjoying them. We've been enjoying making them. Um, We're going to have one more coming up next week as well. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of close out the series as everybody is kind of launching themselves into the new school year. A lot of new homeschoolers. We've gotten a lot of new people. Thank you, Facebook, for recommending us to those those (laughs) new people. Welcome to you guys on YouTube. You guys are signing up all the time. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Absolutely great. Wonderful. What do you got to say? What do you got to go? We're going into it? We're going to start saving (laughs) Yeah, I was just going to say thanks. Uh, We got a couple (laughs) new reviews on iTunes. We really appreciate (gasps) you guys. And so it really helps us when uh, folks review us on YouTube. Uh, It helps new people find our podcast and makes us look legitimate. So thank you all. (laughs) (laughs) They don't know. We don't know what we're talking about. All right. All right. It's late. It's late. Let's get into this. Absolutely. Let's do it. Books, school. What are we doing? So as we started our, our, our last episode, we talked about curriculum Mm -hmm. and I totaled up how much we spent. I thought, you know, I got to do it for here too. Right. So (laughs) on our first episode, they, they say, um, the internet says, (laughs) which, you know, (laughs) with a grain of salt, uh, this doesn't include all of our thrifting runs to to Goodwill. I mean, I made an estimate. They say (laughs) that books and supplies per homeschool year can range anywhere from about $50 to $500. We spent six hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> for our books and supplies for this last school year. This but I want to caveat this, sweetie. I haven't worked in six and a half. We are years. breaking the. It's your money that you're spending. <laughs> we are breaking the budget in all of our areas. Um, 
So I guess what totally I would say... Totally not budget homeschoolers. Which what I would say to... Yeah, we're not. Uh, what I would say to caveat this a little bit is that I oftentimes buy ahead. I buy for the next coming years yeah. uh, books that I see or that I know, or I, I get books on a sale that's like, maybe we don't need it right now, but it was a good deal and I yeah, still grabbed like it. She lamented not buying a book last night when she found out that that book was in the Build Your Library level four <laughs> curriculum three years from now. I so know. I should have bought that well, book. Because we were looking at it at Goodwill and you were like, I think this is a good ratings and i was like oh okay well maybe we'll get it but it's i don't know it's 2.99 it's kind of a lot and so we didn't get it and then it was a build your library level four book i was like shucks so anyways um yeah i do buy a lot of things ahead so i don't think that this is necessarily the amount for a year but for you know well, i mean ballpark out of the 600 dollars is it you're looking at like 300 dollars for is it half for this year or is it I mean, I don't think there's any good way to quantify that. That is what my accounting uh, would call an indirect cost, meaning it's just too difficult to quantify. So we're just going to allocate it across the years. So um, it's a depreciation. <laughs> that's a different problem. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think that this is strictly that. I would say that this is about five hundred dollars in books, mm-hmm. and then the other hundred and thirty is in supplies. We bought uh, one of those. VTech globes, the interactive globes. We had various purchases of art supplies and pencils and paper and rulers and a few things like that. Uh, we didn't buy a ton of school supplies this year because we had already had a house with quite a few in it uh, from last year, but it was, this is a book, book heavy thing. So, but you know, for fun anyway, that's how much we spent. So, so let's, let's load your up. fun, my cringe. I was like, Ooh, yeah, no, it's, it's okay. You do a good job. Let's <laughs> talk about books mm-hmm. books is always a huge thing yeah should i buy books should i get them new should i get them from the library should i get them used we we have a great episode called buy all the books we'll put that in the link in the right show notes and as so well. this is going to be kind of a a shortened uh, condensed version of the buy all the books episode yeah. which i still think is is one of our best and um it gives you a few more ideas too one of the things i'd like to say before we even get into how to buy books cheaply is If you're on a budget, Mm -hmm. you may really want to consider what curriculum you use. Some curriculums are incredibly book heavy. We really like the literature-based curriculums. They are very book heavy. If you use a curriculum like Torchlight, for example, it uses a ton of really new books. There are other lit-based curriculums that may use books that are a bit easier to acquire used. Or in some some respects, they may use some older books that may be open source that you can get from you know, Gutenberg or, you know, free from... from Or they may not use books that you have to specifically get that exact book, but you can get a book. Like Blossom and Root's really good about giving you like three options for your different reference books and things. So... That, that's the one thing that I would say if you're on a budget or or otherwise outside the United States and you need to get everything shipped, mm-hmm. really consider doing these lit heavy curriculums um, because you can still get chapter books and things, but maybe you don't need to get a million picture books. I mean, some of these are, you know, the ones that we, we tend to prefer for ourselves personally because we're book people. For They're these very younger, book heavy. Yeah, these younger years and they are you know, you're right, more lit heavy, but they're also a lot of children's book heavy. A lot of picture books. And the the thing is, for picture books is they're wonderful, they're beautiful to look at, but for bang for the buck, you're going to be spending fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars on a new version of some of these books. I mean, and how many times you're going to read it? How many words are in there yeah. versus like a, a chapter book that you can get for you know paperback for seven or eight dollars? It's like you got to start to really think about it if you're on it's a really, really tight budget. Like, should I be spending money on you know these you know this type of you know kids book versus maybe a, a early reader or uh, a right. chapter book that might might suit me better in yeah. the long run. And one of the questions I think you have to ask is, is there a uh, an easily substitutable book for the, the book yeah. that's called out in the curriculum? If you've got something that's really expensive that the curriculum calls out, really drill down into that. If it's like the main chapter book, those usually aren't very expensive though. As you said, you can yeah. usually either you can get those used or they're only new. They're, you know, sometimes sub 10 bucks. But some of these picture books, for example, they are very expensive. Yeah. And, you know, you, I think you really have to take a, a hard look at things you can't acquire affordably or can't get from your library and say, like, is there something I could substitute? Because we found in our Around the World journey, if you've watched any of our Around the World videos, we used a whole bunch of extra books. And oftentimes for the week, the book we liked the best was not the one that the curriculum recommended. Not that that one wasn't a good book. It was, but we also found other amazing books too. So 
I think that just to caveat this whole discussion about how to get them cheaply, do you need it to be that specific book? Could it not be another book that you can get more affordably or that your library has? Don't get so locked into the curriculum says X, so I must do X. Uh, because I think if you're really rigid about it, it makes this more expensive. Because there's going to be some book that the curriculum calls out that your library doesn't have, even if you know relying on your library was your main source. And you're going to have to be stuck with, do I drop 15 bucks on a kid's picture book or not? And, that, and that's why we, you know, in our resource guides, we try to give a bunch of alternatives. But I think that there are often perfectly viable substitutes. So, And, you know, if, if shipping books to your area is a little difficult, you may think about doing the digital versions right. of these books. You know, they tend to be a little bit cheaper digitally and you can have them delivered directly to like a Kindle or an iPad or a tablet of some sort. Right. So you may have to think about like, you know, what are the alter alternative methods of delivery? Right. Think about ebook uh, or audio. And we're going to talk about a few options here. Absolutely. But yeah, don't get locked into exactly that book and really think before you choose something that's lit heavy. Um, so, you know, how you're going to acquire those books. So let's talk about buying because yeah. so, we buy a lot of books. So where's that, you know, I think we did a short bite on this, on this website, but let's do a little bit more on it. Book finder. This book is kind of like, your, com. this is kind of your go-to place to start. Yes, it is absolutely. Bookfinder.com is an aggregate search engine. It's going to look at both new and used versions of the book. Really important with Bookfinder because there are so many micro variations of book editions. Yeah. You need to grab the ISBN of the one that you want, or you're likely to get it's difficult to just search on a title. Just trust me on this. So go to Amazon, grab the ISBN number that's halfway down the page in the book information, paste that into Bookfinder, and it's going to bring up all of your new and used books. There's something kind of cool about Bookfinder. There are other aggregate search, you know, Google shopping will do this for you. But what I like about Bookfinder is you can click a button that says include shipping <laughs> to mm. your location. So sometimes the cheapest book is actually not the cheapest because it has super expensive shipping. Um, so it's great to see this is the price I'm actually going to pay out the door, <laughs> not what I think before we add this expensive shipping. One thing I would mention, though, is be a little bit careful. If you're planning to do batch buying, you might want to unclick that box because you might find that, you know, your shipping is like $30 as, or $35 or something to get your shipping threshold. If you're buying a bunch of books used, you could still maybe reach that. It's a little bit difficult with used books, especially because oftentimes they're coming from different booksellers. And so you're going to have to pay shipping for each of them anyways. Um, but especially if you're going new books, if I'm really looking new, I tend to like click and unclick the shipping button so that I can kind of gauge if I'm going to order multiple books, might be worth it to just do it as a batch. So Bookfinder is my ultimate go-to first stop if I'm going to buy a book. Do they, you know, if you're buying books, maybe, you know, when you're done with the books, you want to try and maybe get some of that value back. Do they support buybacks? Yeah. So I think it's uh, sell your sell back your book, maybe something like that. It's on there. So when you're searching for it, it will actually give you buyback prices right there. So you know, when I bought this book, here's what they would pay me to, if I wanted to sell it back when I was done. Obviously, you're going to get more money if you sell it to a private party, like through Facebook Marketplace or a buy, sell, trade group for that curriculum. Mm -hmm. But you can have a general idea that this book is worth something if I wanted to sell it back. Know that those buyback values are um, variable based on supply and demand. So if there's a ton of books flooding the market, you're not going to get as much for it as if there are not. So just be aware that that's not like a hard and fast number that when you're done with the book, it's absolutely going to have that value because it's not necessarily the case. So, but so, it is nice information. Yeah, absolutely. And so a second website that you like to use is Book Outlet. Yeah, I use Book Outlet quite a bit. Book Outlet is for surplus books. Yeah. So you've got your Walmart or Costco or wherever buys a bunch of books they have them out for a season. Whatever they don't sell, they, they sell them to Book Outlet at a discount, and then Book Outlet sells them to you. So it's you know excess from major retailers and bookstores and all that kind of stuff. What this means is that it's a very mixed bag. Sometimes you're going to find stuff, and sometimes you're not. I have found a ton of books on there to support Build Your Library and Torchlight curriculums both. I found I found tons of books. What type of sh like savings are they looking at here? Yeah, I, usually <clears throat> the book will be probably... 
uh, 30% of the cost. I mean, you can get some significant savings on Book Outlet. What I like to do is I have an account on there. I set up a list of all the books that I'm looking for. It'll email me when one of those books is in, and then I can go ahead and pick it up. The problem is you need to get $35 free shipping to use Book Outlet. So if you go there for one book and you save five bucks on it, but then you have to pay five bucks shipping, that was not worth it. But one of the things I do like is Book Outlet also has a number of books that they're, they pretty regularly have. Like, for example, they have the Who Was, the Who HQ books. Who HQ. They have a ton of those books and we collect those books because I think that they're really good to have as reference. So I have a second list, which is like, books that they have right now that I'd be willing to add to my cart to get to free shipping. So many times they'll send me an email, Hey, a book that you want's available. I'll add a couple more books and then I'll be at free shipping. Or, you know, I'll have a few things maybe for Christmas every year we get our kids coloring books. So I'll have dropped a couple coloring books in there. So I know, Hey, next time I put in a book outlet or I'll just grab a couple coloring books too. So I have some kind of go to's for that, but I have saved quite a bit by going to book outlet. Absolutely. And and I think that thinking ahead like that, I think is the big takeaway is having the plan, having the the forethought to, to know what you need helps you save in the long run. So being a little bit planning focused, Mm -hmm. you know, being a little bit thoughtful, I think can also help you save a little bit of money. So if you're just buying books just in time, yeah, you know, that's all never going to save. You're never going to save that way unless you just get a deal. Right. It just happens to be luck. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is all about planning. And that's what we talked about with, you know, the curriculum episode too, is it's, you're going to get a better deal if you know a bit in advance for us, you know, we made the joke about build your library, but we intend to continue going with build your library. Even if we combo it with other things, I like the, I like the, you know, history structure of every year. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm buying books ahead of time for me, I feel like is a good investment. So those are getting books that are on the big deal sites. How about let's talk about getting books that are used. You know, right. used books are just as good as new books and they just happen to be cheaper. Yeah, that's right. So, so wh- th- where do we go? We, yes. we go thrifting. What did we do last night? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever we have a day off, a date date night, we go thrifting. Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple things, right? So you can get them used yeah. through like thrift books. And I have some sites I really like. Second Sale is one that I really like. And it comes up on Bookfinder as well. But um, so not thrift books, I'm sorry, Bookfinder. It comes up on Bookfinder, but I love to go to Second Sale. I've gotten a bunch of the chapter books for Torchlight on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and for for Build Your Library, no, no problem. There's a, quite a few things there. And they'll have specials like buy buy three get one free if the books are under five bucks and their their kids chapter books are usually under five bucks so you can get some good deals um but if you don't find a website to buy them used you can go and find them at thrift often and we did we went last night to a couple of different goodwills and value villages and i i found a book to help us with our harry potter unit study we're finishing up right now so i'll figure out how to incorporate that before we're done Uh, you can definitely find good extra books at consignment you just have to be aware of what you need and have that in your mind whether it's you make a book list and you keep it on your phone or you um you when you checked your book list last night right you said right do i have this book oh no i don't great right so we have this app called book buddy that i i like and we've scanned in the barcodes of all the books that we own so when i'm thrifting i know hey i don't have that one yet sometimes it's difficult to remember especially when you're collecting a series i'm like i don't remember do i have the second book in the series or the third book you know and so i'm trying to put that together Um, but you can often find really good deals and like for Goodwill, for example, we were there yesterday, which was a Tuesday and on Tuesdays, all their books are 30% off, which is a pretty good deal at Goodwill. So you can really do quite well, uh, if you know the days the deals are. The other thing is you can find consignment stores, uh, consignment stores for kids stuff and consignment stores for homeschool. We have a homeschool consignment store in our Metro area and it's worth driving to because they have some wonderful prices there and great sales at the consignment store. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not only can you buy things used, but you can then get used and on sale, which is like a double bonus. Um, we also have these kids consignment sales that happen typically in the spring and in the fall. And those two times of year, and this is families that consign all this stuff to kind of like a pop-up sale, and it comes into some sort of like empty commercial space and they have it for a few days. Or like a um, convention center. Or... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, one, one of them is in a convention center. You're right near us. And one of them's at the fairgrounds. So those are really nice. It sells all kinds of kids stuff, clothes and toys and all kinds of things. Yeah. But 
great selection of books typically uh, from other families in your area. So I can usually pick up some curriculum books there uh, that I need for, for the curriculum. Um, and I can also, some of those sales have like the last day is 50% off before they're going to donate the things that they didn't sell. And I can get additional great deals on those days. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah keep an eye out because I know you've, you've, you've gone on like the day before where it's like 30% off. Then the last day it's like 60%. I go off. every day when it, yeah. when they're doing like the discount days and it gets more and more and more, I go every day. And they also sometimes sell like VIP tickets so you can be the first person into the place. Right. So if I you're think really that's, looking for something. That's really good when you have like a new baby and you yeah. need to get a lot of things. Yeah. I've never really paid for the VIP tickets. Maybe I'm super missing out. Yeah, you see a lot of new moms and grandmas going in there <laughs> early to go get that's like, right. you know, pack and plays and cribs and things of that nature. Yeah. But you can do really well on books at those locations. The other thing to do is check out your local used bookstores. You'd be mm-hmm. amazed what they have. We have a half price books near us. They have deals a couple of times um, a quarter and it's great to go into half price books. I mean, our, our local bookstore here in town is really, really good. Her prices are really good. I, I know her from my writing, my writing events and stuff. So, you know, yeah. wonderful. You can get a you know, get a brand new book for three or four dollars. It's great. Right. Yeah. Patronize your local used bookstores. Yeah. And then when you're looking for curriculum specific things, I really like the Facebook buy, sell trade groups for that curriculum. You know, there's one for Torchlight. There's one for Build Your Library. There's a Blossom and Root one. You know, name your curriculum. There's a buy, sell trade group probably for it. I mean, you can go on there and people will sell bundles of books. You can also do an ISO. I talked about this on the curriculum episode in search of. And so I can say, ISO this uh, these couple of chapter books yep. that I need for Torchlight and somebody's going to sell it to you. You do have to pay shipping for those. So, But it is nice to get a bundle. And if you're looking to pick up like a complete set of spines for a curriculum, that is a great place to do it because you can really get the whole bundle of what you need in one shipping cost. And it's nice to do ISO as I discussed in the curriculum episode, because if you do that and if And if you do it far enough in advance, like let's say you're going to start in six months or four months or something, and you say, hey, ISO all the spines for this level, somebody could, you know, and I'm not starting right away, so PM me if you're going to be getting close. You can then have somebody PM you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be done with these books in a month, and I'll sell them to you for this price. It's like, great. You make the deal, and then they don't ever post it on to for sale, and you get to buy it directly from them without having to be that first person to see their, their post. So... If you can think ahead, you always save by thinking ahead is, I think, the moral of the story. The last thing that I want to mention is uh, the couple of sales. So just, you know, for for new books specifically, every quarter, Amazon and Target both do. Well, Target starts it and then Amazon quickly adds it because Target did it. Um, It's a buy two, get one free on books. I wanted to mention the specific sale because many of the very expensive reference books are included in the sale. Target is pretty good about just about every book in the Target, Mm -hmm. you know, online store is included. Um, Amazon is not so good. They really have a subset uh, selection. So, you know, really look on both sites. This is great for spines. If you're looking for one. Great for spines. Yeah, big spines. So we just did a bunch of videos on our YouTube channel about our Build Your Library and Torchlight spines that we use for our Around the World journey. If you have a chance, go check those out. This is where we got a lot of those spines. I got almost all the spines, I would say, from these sales. I bought a couple of them used, but the vast majority I got from these sales because those books are like 20 bucks. And so you can get buy two, get one free. And it can be a little pricey on the spines. It really makes it much more But they're a book that you're going to keep coming back to over and over again. So you're going to get a lot of... Right. There's going to be a lot of... uh, a learning that comes out of it. Right. When it comes yeah. to those like really cool DK Smithsonian yeah. books and those kind that I want as like a reference to keep around in our homeschool long term, I always get them on this sale because it's the best way. Some of those really new, nice reference books, you just don't find used. You're just not going to no. find it. You're It's going to be a new book. The last thing I had mentioned is... Uh, definitely remember to ask for books for Christmas, right? You know, grandmas and grandpas are always asking, hey, what can we get the kids? It's like, well, you know, they really love this toy. And here's a few of the books that we're going to be using this year for homeschool that are maybe pick ones that are very visually appealing that the kids will be excited to receive. But, you know, that can be a really great way to get a couple of those more expensive spine books that you need. Well, especially if you've committed to homeschooling. I know a lot of our family members are, are asking, you know, what can we do to help you know, with their education, you know, cause they, they think yeah, it's, they it's, wanna help. it's different than just sending them to the public school. They want to be involved and be, be part of it and say, Oh, here you go. So these are these great series of books that she loves to read or whatever. Maybe you can get mm-hmm. those and, 
and add that as part of you know a stocking stuffer or something of that nature. That's yeah. right. I it's, think a, it's a great idea. It's a great way to do it. And you know, you can also mention to grandma or grandpa when the big sales come out from yeah. Target and Amazon too. You can say, hey, you know, the big sales out right now for books, and and I'm sure the kids would love some books for Christmas. You know, here's the ones that they would like. I mean, give them some guidance. But yeah. um, if you do do the sale, remember that. With Target, you can bundle all your purchases. So if it's, you know, buy two, get one free, I could get 12 books and it's going to give me discounts based on groupings of prices. It's not just going to give me the three cheapest or four cheapest ones for free. It's actually going to group them. These were all five bucks. These were all 10 bucks. These, this group was all 14 bucks. It's going to do that and then give you the lowest of each of those groupings. So it is smart, the system in that way. You don't have to split all your orders up. I don't think that Amazon is as smart yeah. and you will have to split your orders if you want to get all the promotions and not have them just give you the, the three cheapest ones for free. Um, and Target also has a debit card that you can sign up for. It just, it's linked to your bank account. So it's not a, it's not a credit card, uh, but you get 5% off when you use it. So, cause they don't have to pay the credit card fee. So you get 5% off. So I really like using Target for that reason. So yeah. just a quick note about Target. Well, and if you consider how much you're, you're spending it, you know, that, that type of money can add up over time. That's right. Absolutely. So, so you yeah. know, weigh your chosen method, whichever way you're going to do. If you're going to go with used books, you're going to go with new books, you're going to try to book, do a uh, book outlet or go to the Facebook buy, sell, trade or wait for your consignment sale to come up. There's a lot of avenues. There's Sometimes a lot of it ways. feel like a lot of spinning plates. It, it can. When I'm, when I'm starting, just, you know, so everyone kind of knows my process, I, I start right away by making a type of a, a spreadsheet type list or I, I do it in Trello mostly, but you know, I make a list of all the books that I need. I make the list for this coming year and maybe the year after if I know that far, which you know, at this point I think I do and hopefully we don't pivot too much. Um, and then I, I put down all the prices from BookFinder. So I kind of know what the going rate is and if I can get it used or if it's just as cheap to get it new. And then I have an idea of what I'm looking at. I also go and I check my library for those books and then I cross-reference and go, yeah, I don't need to buy this. I move it into the library category. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm only going to read this picture book once. I'm just going to get it from the library. Whereas this chapter book I'm going to read for three weeks. I think we should buy that. Um, you know, so I do all of that kind of thing and then I know what the prices are. I know what I'm looking at. And I have an idea of how I want to tackle. If it's like, I got to get this on one of those buy two, get one free sales. I go ahead and put it on my favorites list at Target. And that way when the sale comes up, I remember, oh yeah, I wanted to get that expensive spine. Um, you know, so you can kind of make a game plan. That's how I start. But just remember that all these different options take a different amount of your time and energy. Mm. The lowest buried entry is just to go on prime and just buy it from Amazon. Right. But you know, that's not the most budget friendly option. Whereas, you know, I guess the whole other end of the scale is waiting to thrift for it, which is just a total shot in the dark. You don't know if you'll ever get the book that you need. Well, and, and it takes a lot, a of, lot those, of trips. A lot of a lot those of companies now are starting like, um, I know value village and, and goodwill are now starting to remove expensive books that they know have value. Mm -hmm. And then I think they have their own online platforms they're they trying do. to sell them through. So, you know, leaving them on the shelves is pretty rare. So if... You can still find lots of good books, but you you, find you're not going to yeah. find... Yeah. You may not find the most it's, expensive it's ones. It's not there. like what it was 10 years ago. <laughs> no, it was much better. <laughs> it was much better back then. So, yeah, just remember that all these different avenues require a different amount of your time and effort. And so you have to, you know, slot in how important is it for me to save a couple of bucks versus the ease of being able to just go and get it without having to, to hunt for it? Your mileage may vary. If you want a little bit longer discussion on this, I'll link the buy all the books episode down really below. I'll make sure to include that if you want to check that out. Going on to the next level. So that's buying books and all the various ways to buy books. Most of us, most homeschoolers are going to be using the library. Right. We so, rely heavily yeah. on our local library. And and this really depends. You know, if you're out of the U.S., you don't have maybe the area and doesn't have a library that you can use like that. Or, you know, maybe you have a small town library that doesn't have a lot of books. Um, but where you can leverage your library, obviously, it's the best way to go. Uh, I like to check the availability from my library when I start thinking about the curriculum I'm, I'm going to go with. Because even though we have spent a lot of money on books... 
you could spend like a thousand dollars if you got, if you bought all the torchlight books, for example. So the first thing I did when I thought about using torchlight K was like, I'm going to check my library and see how many of these titles my library actually has. So if you're looking for a budget friendly option, you really want to do that assessment before you commit that that's going to be your curriculum because you may find out your library has almost nothing <laughs> that you need. And then that really changes the calculus of what was a, you know, very affordable PDF curriculum is all of a sudden much, much more expensive. Um, the other thing to look at is not the only does my library have it, how many copies does it have? If every book that you need for, for one of these curriculums, they only have one copy, like that's pretty risky. Yeah. And depending on how how popular that curriculum is in your area, you will start to see this. As you go look for the books, you'll start to see when, oh yeah, they have three copies and all three are checked out right now and there's a waiting list, right? Yeah. Like this might be, you might be in an area where one of these curriculums is pretty popular. I'm not saying you can't do this with that. And I have done, I have done the torchlight and build your library when it is popular in my area and there is a wait list for books sometimes. So that's when you have to shift shifting your schedule so that you are not starting at the same time as everybody else, that August, September timeline, let maybe you put a unit study in and you start in January and said, you will notice a world of difference in availability of books at your library off by cycle. not being on the same cycle. Yes. Yep. Off cycle is a huge, huge deal. So just consider that. How many copies do they have? And do I need to consider going off cycle if I want to make sure that these books are available when mm -hmm. I need them? And you don't have to go way off cycle. I, you know, just putting yourself a month off cycle is probably enough to avoid a lot of the... I mean, I think it really depends. Some yeah. people start in August and some people start in September. I would really choose a few months. I would do two, three months if it were me, just to make sure that you're really not clashing with folks who started in that in August, September timeframe. <laughs> um, next thing is basically um, eBooks and audiobooks from the library. Yeah. So you've got your OverDrive and Libby, and there's, I mean, there's a bunch of apps that your library. I've, I've uses. learned. I've now made the shift over to Libby. Overdrive and Libby are the same company. Libby is the new version the new of one. Overdrive. And there's another, I don't remember what the e-reader e version, uh, there's an e, um, e-book app as well, but definitely get comfortable with those. I wasn't comfortable at first with using e-books with my kid. I really wanted physical books. But if the difference is like, hey, I can use an e-book or I have to buy it, I mean, e-book might be preferable if it's just a single-use chapter book. So well, and a lot of, you know, a get lot comfy of, with that. A lot of great things is um, at the library, if they have the digital version, and then they also have a print version, you can check out the digital version. And with your account, I know the one on, on, on ours is, is we can link that to our Kindle app. And what they will do is they will then send that book to your Kindle app, and you'll be able to read that on your in your, your reader. So in your Kindle e-reader. So if you're doing that on a Kindle, like like an e-reader, or if you have like a tablet or an iPad of some sort, and you have the app installed there, it will show up in in your basically your bookshelf there, and you'll be good, you'll be able to read it on your tablet or mobile device. You can also do that on your computer as well if you have like mm -hmm. a a Surface computer that you end up using as like kind of your main hub. I'm starting to play kind of around with the idea of having like a central computer that we kind of work from and, and use that as a general thing. So. You know, if you're if you're thinking in that in those terms, you can absolutely get those ebooks delivered to uh, some you know digital device that that you can end up reading from, and then audiobooks just pivot right on top of that, right? So they yeah, you can download. And not all things work for audio, but some yeah. of them it's great, and it's another good way to get your reading, in, especially if you're in the car. Uh, we we have a whole episode called "Using the Library to the Fullest," and we'll link, that we'll link well. it here at, in the show notes. So, just it's about books, but more than books, all the other things that you can do with your local library that you yeah. can take advantage of. So yeah, in a lot of respects, it's there's some there's even more. It's funny how like it's it's books and even more, you know. Right? Yeah, we libraries. get a lot of stuff from our library. All of the movies and uh, you know audio, like music CDs yeah. and things to go with the country studies we did. We got all that stuff from the library. So you know, we, we talked a little bit about the library. We 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 started talking about digital books. Let's get deeper into digital books because mm -hmm. I think this is going to become an avenue that you know over the next five ten years, I think we're seeing more and more people reading digital books. That's true in the publishing world. I, I know the print books kind of made a resurgence during the the pandemic, but digital use of books, being able to read books in, we both read books on our phones now. We have our e-readers. I'm doing audio books a lot. You know, having that, 
you know, digitizing those books is a huge thing. So one of the big places where you can go is Project Gutenberg, um, which is an open source repository of all books that are in the public domain. So any book, I can never remember what year we're up to, but we're somewhere in the 20s. Um, so every book that was printed, say, before the 20s is now in the public domain. I believe The Great Gatsby just moved into the public domain. So um, I think some of the Hemingway stuff is going to be moving into public domain pretty soon here. So we're looking at the 20s. So they are a repository of books that are pre pre the um, uh, copyright uh, limit, I think the window. They are everything past that, and also any book that has been then gifted into the public domain in right. that in, in that time frame. So you and can there's pick, a number of them to have. You can pick up all your great classics. What you know, this is a good place to do great, cla- great place to, to do, do classics, classics if so, you want to get them digitally. Yeah, if you have classics, 1800s books that are part of your curriculum or, or reading, this is a great place to go and get the digital versions. You can get all the different types of digital versions, whatever format you might need, whether it's a Mobi format for say a Kindle reader. Or if you're like an EPUB where you have some just generalized reader, you have PDFs as well. So there's just like so many different formats that they support and it's a, a decent search engine. The website's probably needs a, a revamp, but it, you know, as a charitable organization, I think they do a yeah, decent no, job. Yeah, I think they do a good job. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of services that you can, you can subscribe to that give you access to digital books that are uh, more heavily based in picture books and kids chapter books. So we'll talk about a couple of them here. So Epic is the first one. It's better for uh, elementary kids. Yeah. It's got more picture books on it. It's $10 a month or $5 a month if you sign up for the whole year. I've heard mixed reviews of Epic. I know that for one of my problems with it and Scribd too, which we'll talk about Scribd in a minute, is that you can't search the catalog before you sign up. Yeah. So um, that can be problematic. What you will find though is on the discussion groups, like, you know, if you go on to like the Torchlight discussion groups and you say like, how many books are on Epic that are in this level? You'll have some parents who are Epic members who will be able to tell you and may already have a list of what's on Epic. The other thing is... It's only five bucks to find out, <laughs> you know, you could, or 10 bucks, right? If you wanted to do yeah. one month, you could try think, it out. Don't they have a trial version? That's I, like I didn't days? see a trial okay. on Epic. I always thought there was like a 10 day or seven day trial. I, I'm not sure. I didn't see when I was looking on the website, but maybe that, maybe there is, that would be good if they did, but it would be good to get in there and at least look because you could say, I mean, maybe it's not worth doing every month. There's a lot of other kids' books. It might be a resource that your family and likes. And this is an unlimited access to as many books right. as you want. So this is in line with the Amazon uh, Kindle Unlimited, where you right. pay a monthly recurring fee, and you get to read as much as you want. Right. Yeah, and so this is the same idea with, with Epic, is that you're paying mm-hmm. for access to a community. So think of it as the same as like Netflix, right, where you're, you're not paying per movie, you're paying for the rights to, to view the catalog. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and you're bringing up Kindle Unlimited, which I think is good to talk about. You know, I haven't heard that there there is all that much for the earlier elementary set, which we normally kind of focus on. Obviously, you're going to find older chapter books on there, but it's going to be, that's also going to be another hit and miss. It would be easier to search, though, because you as just yeah. a regular person could go on Amazon and search for a chapter book and yeah. see if it has if it's Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. I, it's all going to be... I know for a fact you can actually just limit your search to books that are in Kindle Unlimited. Perfect. So you could yeah. do that, too. And I believe they have the new service now is Vellum, but I don't think that's really... Um, I think it's not Vellum. Vella, I think is what it's called, and it's a kind of a serialized consumable... A method of reading books, but they're probably not going to be the books that are in your curriculum. There may yeah. be more something that you just enjoy on the side. I, I don't find in general that Kindle Unlimited has the larger mainstream books as much. I mean, they have some of them. It's they, just, it's going to be a hit yeah. and miss situation, just they're, like Epic. They're always moving in and out because I know the Kindle Unlimited, uh, from the author side of the point of view, is a 90 day cycle. So, and I don't know what they do with publishers, like big publishers probably yeah, are negotiating sure. unlimited deals, but you know, the, it doesn't have all the books and you just need to go into it knowing that. But if you do read a lot and if your student reads a ton, I know a lot of the biggest series are in unlimited. 
Right. Yeah. If, if you just want to, and I guess this is true for Epic as well, if, if you just want to have access to a lot of great books digitally, yeah. um, you know, maybe you're going to be going on trips or whatever you want. You don't want to have the clutter of having books in the house. You just want to do digitally and you don't have a specific titles that you need. These services might be a great deal. Well, especially for somebody who lives maybe on an island that doesn't get the shipping and as affordable right. or if they're kind of overseas and maybe there's some right. weird um, shipping issues or you know rights issues and being in a different country being able to access unlimited amount of reading Absolutely. from a digital device might be a great thing and, and i think right. it is the future um, kind of this you know mm-hmm. service-based you know, I can consume as much as I want. Especially if you're yeah. like a, if you're, if you're a, a family that's living in a country that's not an English speaking country. And so yeah. you can't just go and get local books that are in <laughs> yeah, English. Problem, These yeah. digital services would be great for that. So Scribd is another one. Um, it's better for older learners, like middle high school age. There is a 30 day trial on that one. And then it's 12 bucks a month. Uh, I think with all of these things, it's really going to be a hit and miss. You're going to have to hunt and peck around. Again, it's about your time and, and that, and that time value kind of trade off that you have to determine if it's, if it's worth it to spend your time trying to go to all of these services and confirm, you know, if they have the exact books that you want, if you've got a a pretty lengthy list of books that you need for the year. Yeah. I think you have to pick and choose what you're doing. Like if you're more of an eclectic homeschooling family where you're kind of piecing together your curriculum, these type of things may work well for you, but if you have a very specific book list, you may have to do something a little bit different. Right. If you're, if you're like, hey, we're going to do unit studies and we're going to do volcanoes and we're going to do sharks and we're going to do this, and you don't have like specific book that you need for each of those categories, but you want to find some books about that topic, these will probably work for you. Um, so yeah, just your mileage may vary on it. How about open library? Yeah, so that's libraries that have digitized books from their collection. It's totally free, so you can look at it. Um, I don't have a lot of stats on, I know there are some books from the curriculums that we use that are on open library, but again, it's just, there's no one repository for all the things. You'll have to just kind of hunt and peck and see if it's worth paying for, or, you know, maybe open library has it. So those are those are our best ideas. If you have any other sites that you really like to use for digital books that carry, you know, commonly available or are commonly used digital books for some of the curriculums and things or or other just great stories, please let us know. I know that I know that families have not been super happy with the selection on either Epic or Scribd. Mm-hmm. Some families really love it if their kids burn through a lot of books and they just really like like that but when you're looking for specific things it can be very hit and miss absolutely um so those were books and we've linked the episode notes down below in the episode on the previous episodes that we've done regarding books and libraries and buying all the books let's get a little bit into supplies so Mm -hmm. that was the book side of the house now we have the supplies side of the house. so many supplies i mean i think it's really important to think about what supplies you actually need Uh, you know there's a lot of nice to haves but if you're thinking about this on a budget really get down to brass tacks what is it that you actually are going to need Um, and then those nice to haves you know we bought a like i said we bought this interactive globe it was really cool but that would have been a great thing to ask a grandparent to buy for christmas we totally could have done that and that would have been fine when you're really talking about supplies traditionally you're going to need mostly the common school supplies if Mm -hmm. you haven't homeschooled before you're going to be needing lots of art supplies and and homeschoolers don't need anything special appreciably different appreciably different than what you know kids would normally use it depends what you want to do at home and and how crafty you are if you're a family that loves a lot of arts and crafts i think the arts i think that's where the arts is almost a separate thing like if you're just thinking what do they need for for homeschooling you know a bag pencils paper things of those natures you know workbooks um you know like the composition books uh loose leaf paper construction paper things of that nature glue scissors you know those are all Really great things you can put together in an art caddy. Maybe we'll we'll do an episode on our art caddy uh, coming up here. But um, just getting those basics is, I think, pretty cheap, and you can do those at you know yeah. when Walmart or Target or you know what, if one of your stores is doing their back to you know back to school stuff. Well, and I think that that's the best yeah, recommendation really. that we have is try to think ahead about what you need for the year. You can check out the materials and supplies section at the beginning of any of the, of the curriculum that you're that you're going to be doing for the year, and then shop in right now. Shop right now. But for also, supplies. also the important thing I, I run into this all the time. Um, knowing what you have and having that organized so that oh, you're yeah. not buying holy cow i just bought another 128 crayons 
I don't need another hundred or <laughs> here's another set of 12 markers that goes with our already set of a hundred markers. We don't need more right. markers. Like you always forget what you have if you're not organized because mm -hmm. sometimes it's spread throughout the house. It's in the homeschool room. It's in your art caddy and everything. Having a good grasp on, on the supplies that you have, yeah, I think can help save you a lot of money because you end up buying multiple versions of the same thing. And, right. and that's okay if you're like, hey, we have like these um, art caddies that we take in the car when we go on a long trip. Yeah. And those are specially outfitted to have their own supplies, right? So that's that's fine. But, you know, we have our box in the in the, in the kitchen where we, we have our, we do most of our homeschooling. Um, I have a box of like 50 pencils, right? Yeah. And they're all mechanical pencils. And so it's just great. I can reach in there. Anytime I need a pencil, I just grab a pencil. Well, we have many times purchased supplies that oh, yeah. we thought we needed only to find that they were in the homeschool room in a spot we didn't realize yeah. and we d double bought. So I think that the idea of being well organized is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're organized, then make a list of what you think you're going to need for the year. And that might be a pretty lengthy list, uh, but there's a couple of good things to do. One, you know, shop during the back to school sales. Absolutely. Because everything is as cheap as it's going to be at those times. The other thing that um, I'm thinking of now as, as we're talking about art supplies is your thrift stores, your Goodwills and things have a ton mm. of art supplies. They tend to come in the bags too. Yeah. And, and, and they'll, they'll be like, like bundled together. Like there'll right. be things that you tend to want to buy together. Not necessarily like markers. I mean, sometimes they do have like markers and crayons, yeah. but more like uh, stamps and stencils. stencils and Other like and... what you would consider crafting supplies. Yeah, 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 you yeah. will find some really good uh, crafting supplies at yeah, Thrift. I actually went there last aware. night and I took a look and see if there was anything that we needed. It was like a whole shelf of bags of arts and crafts and, and school supplies. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So there's some good stuff there. So you can definitely look there. Um, but if you need to buy a lot of supplies for your school, um, you, you know, you need a lot and you really want a good deal. There's a lot of places that offer homeschool discounts. Uh, the way to apply for those is usually have some sort of, of an ID card. Now you can make your own ID card, but if you go to homeschool buyers co-op and we will put that in a link in the show notes, uh, you can get a, an ID card made for free. This is a digital ID card. You can get one made for yourself or your student um, with your your school chosen school's name on it. You can also, for eight bucks, request that they send you a plastic formal version of the card in the mail. And so I think for eight bucks, it's pretty cheap to get that if you feel that you need something that's on more than just a piece of paper. Uh, and then you can take this card with you and you can go and get discounts with it. So Nice to have the digital version, which you can get for free. For you can get discounts from like on software, uh, Adobe, Microsoft will yeah, all give discounts. So many student um, options, student on a lot and of teacher, teacher options. Teacher options. So you, on you can a lot get of cheap software, software that way. Uh, and if you want to take your physical card into places like Michaels, Joanne's, Barnes and Noble, Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, they all give teacher discounts, and homeschool teachers count. So I think it's important for you to go in and say, "Hey, is there a teacher discount?" Oh yeah, there is. Sometimes you have to see the manager and have to show your ID card. You don't need to, you know, you'll put on there whatever academy you want it to be and you'll show it to them and then they'll give you that discount. Don't feel that you're not worthy of a teacher discount because yeah. you certainly are. You are their teacher. Um, <laughs> don't be intimidated by going in there and saying, I'm a homeschool teacher. I, I definitely felt this way when I went into Michael's and I shouldn't have been worried about it at all because they didn't even question my academy name. They just, oh, what you're a teacher. A, what is our school's name? I, I think I put it, I think it was, I don't, I think it was like Sky, Sassafras Sky Academy. River Academy or something. I don't yeah. remember. Um, I came up with something, but anyways, point being, um, you know, you can get this, this made and then you can get these discounts, yeah. which is really great. Well, and that's also really good too, especially some of those stores where you, you might be buying a computer, uh, a Chromebook Absolutely. or something. I mean, if you're getting five, six, 7% off again, that. That's huge. That definitely hits hits the bottom line really nice. Right. So there is a back to school <laughs> sale every year. Obviously all the scores stores have back to school, but Target does a specific one for teachers. It's a teacher prep event. And if you register with your homeschool ID, you can get like an extra 15% off at wow. that event. There are also some tax free shopping days for teachers at different stores. So look for those. And try to stack them all up on, on the same day. And try yeah. try to try to go to these different sales. Yes. I think it really just takes a takes a vision of what do I need for this year and what do I already have? And then you can think about where you need to go to get that. You know, if it's crafting supplies, personally, I would probably go for the school supplies at the start of the year, 
when they're going to be on sale. And then for crafting supplies, I would probably wait and either thrift them or get mm-hmm. them at Michael's when there's a coupon or something yeah. like that if they're not like traditional school supplies. Well, it depends on what type of art supplies you're looking at. Right. Like, are you looking for graphite pencils? Are you looking for a nice set of watercolors, oil paints, brushes, things of that nature? I agree. Definitely go look at the the thrifting options there because you'll see those yeah. pull, you'll see those come up a lot of times. Or Michaels has great coupons. Have, if you yeah. just wait, if you just know, hey, I need a set of acrylics or something throughout the year, th- there's bound to be a, a sale on those, and you can sign up for um, both Joanne and uh, Michaels yeah. have you know uh, an account. You can get a free account, and they will send you coupons on the app. Uh, you can just take it into the store and use. So yeah. that's a great way to save on any kind of crafting supplies. You know, and you'll. Sometimes I actually have a list of crafting supplies I take with me on Black Friday (laughs) and I get stuff for the next year on Black Friday too, because I know everything is on sale. This is again, just about forethought and about knowing what you need. Whenever you have to do just in time purchases, whether it's for books or supplies or computer equipment or anything, you will always pay more. So if as much as you can think ahead, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. That's how you really save good money. Um, and then finally, for supplies and things, you can look at your buy sell trade groups, your Facebook marketplace. Some play, p- people have great. Uh, there's different homeschool uh, buy sell trade, just general homeschool buy sell trade groups on Facebook that you can join depending on what you need. And if it's a little more specific to homeschool, you need certain kinds of phonics wheels or just different things like that. You might be able to find those more educationally focused things uh, on a buy sell trade group or at a mm-hmm. consignment sale or store. So. We hope these give you some uh, good ideas, though, about books and supplies. Yeah, I think that that kind of rounds out the, you know, we talked about the curriculum. Now we're talking about books and supplies. What will be our next episode? Yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, infrastructure. This is some of the stuff for your homeschool space. Building out, you know, your 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 backyard shed yeah your homeschool space we're also going to be talking about extras this is going to be your field trips your extracurriculars um your media so a few just kind of those extra finishing touches so i think Mm -hmm. that that will round out all of the areas that we as homeschoolers typically spend the most money on and hopefully this gave you a few ideas to save a few bucks and if you find a great deal, let me know because I love hearing about people saving money. It makes me happy. So we hope we've saved you a few dollars today. Absolutely. We love deals. Love it. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time, happy homeschooling!